Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is Go Again, a fabulous video cast covering the trading card game Flesh and Blood. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando. Good morning, Flesh and Blood folks. Welcome back to Go Again, a fabulous cast here on Dice Commando. So last night I had my uh, Tales of Aria pre-release at Fable Hobby. I have another one uh, tomorrow, Sunday, at Gongai. So what I wanted to do in today's video was run down uh, how things went last night, kind of my first impressions, and what I'm going to be looking to do different uh, come tomorrow's pre-release. Good morning, folks, and thanks for tuning in once again. Talking talking pre-releases. Uh, so last night's pre-release at Fable Hobby in Portland, Oregon, USA, uh, that was maxed out at 32 people. It was a really well-run uh, event. Trevor does a good job. He's you know a huge fab huge fab guy, and he enjoys it as well. So put a lot of effort in, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, I was able to get games recorded, so plans to get up those get those up this week. Uh, disclaimers: I haven't I haven't watched them yet. Um, I know some of them are going to be pretty painful because it's pre-release type stuff. Um, yeah, so what I wanted to do was uh, today I do, do three things. We'll do a quick recap of kind of how my night went and then um, talk about some cards that surprised me and then kind of some overall takes and then some interactions and then, like I said, finish up with what I'm going to try to do different, although to be fair, what I'm going to try to do different largely depends on a lot of the stuff I'm talking about anyway because you can't really know until you open your stuff, right? But uh, anyway, so the, I ended up playing Briar mostly because I, I think Briar's, Briar's kind of like the prism of this set. Um, and what I mean by that is she's kind of the go-to if you don't really get anything great. You know what I mean? Like if you don't get anything defining, I think you kind of go with Briar. Uh, the arcane damage thing that, I mean, there's no way to block arcane damage, which is, you know, kind of its own own discussion topic. Um, so, I, I mean, I think Briar's, I, I'd, I'd say most people, I mean, I, I, I ran up 50% Briar. That was, that was probably about right. I mean, I, I heard most people when they were unboxing saying, yeah, I'm going to play Briar. Yeah, I'm going to play Briar. Yeah, I'm going to play Briar. Um, cause I think most people showed up ready to play her, I think. And then depending on what you open, maybe you did something else. So that's just what I mean. She's the prism of the set is, you know, you kind of, you know, end up on that if you don't really have anything else to do. And, 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 I, and I think that's, I think that's fine. So my, my first game was up against a player playing Oldham. This was, I got curb stomped. Like that's the only way to say it. Like it was, it was ugly. Uh, he was playing pure ice Oldham dominate. And uh, he, he had a Terra Sunder and which actually didn't even hit the table. Uh, but he had, he'd pulled what he needed to do. Uh, turn two or his second turn, I think he, it was a 12 dominate. And like, I was like on six, I don't remember exactly. It's on video. I was at like six health at turn two or something like that. I mean, maybe not, maybe eight or something like that, but it was like, whoa. Um, and then, yeah. So that was, I was just on my back foot the whole game and it was, I was able to make it last a lot longer, but I was basically just like dumping my hand. So, you know, the game was over. Uh, second round was up against another Briar. Uh, this one, it was a fun game. Um, it was a really cool opponent, an individual from, from Salem, Oregon. Um, we had a really, really good time. Really, really nice. Cause we had a bunch of rules, questions, interactions and stuff. And like, we were really good talking it out. And I, I really like, you know, when people are there and like you're hanging out with them and like, they care more about like playing the game the right way than like necessarily winning and stuff. Um, I, I really enjoyed this. So that, that was a great game. Uh, part of the problem with that game, though, was, and and kind of kind of a theme for the night, at least with with my experience, was that, you know, blocking is kind of not that important, right? Because everybody's trying to fuse their cards, right? So between your play card, your fuse card, your pay card, and then probably what you're trying to follow it up with, especially with Briar, to try and get, you know, a non-attack and an attack, 
there wasn't a lot of blocking, right? So like we basically just kind of like outgassed each other and I ended up winning it by uh, arcaning him. What was the name of the card? Uh, it's Inspire Lightning, right? Inspire Lightning. And this is one of the, you know, one, one of the, one of my disappointments of the night was in myself. I didn't, I didn't do over, I made a lot of like stupid mistake and it, it didn't end up being like a game mistake because my opponent would catch it. But like Inspire Lightning, I played it and I was like, this is an attack. And like, I don't even know what I was thinking, you know? So I, I, I was a little disappointed with how I played, but, um, well, let's, let's, let's touch on that in a second. Let's finish, finish this. We'll put a note down for Inspire Lightning to come back to that. Uh, third was Lexi. This one was pretty much in my favor the whole way. Uh, I think he made, he, he made one play mistake kind of later on that put him like within arcane damage range that I could just, in, I could just inspire lightning him down. Um, all right. Actually, I don't think it was inspired. I think it was something. Oh, it was uh, Bramble Spark. I got him down to one, and then Bramble Spark was able to just uh, Bramble Spark into um, something. I don't even remember what it was. Right, but Briar, Briar, and then that that took him out. And that that was the that was the play mistake he made was letting himself get down because he had the the boots that let you reduce the damage if you've already taken damage, and he could have used it on the turn before to not put himself at one within arcane damage range. That, that, that was a mistake. I mean, other, otherwise he played well. He got a couple dominate shots off. Um, and it was, it was, it was otherwise a pretty good game, but I never felt that I, I felt that I was in control the whole way. And then last was a uh, game against Billy Horn. Um, really good guy. He plays a gun guy a lot. I, I mean, really, really good dude. Um, he was also on Briar and he, he, I mean, he just straight up outplayed me. Like there, he, he did this really cool combo where he played a card uh, I, f I forget what it was. I'll, I'll put it up on the editing, um, you know, but it's, it's, if you fuse it, you, it's, it's the one with the, the, the chick drawn the, the rune, the, the, like my favorite piece of art from this set. Anyway, if you fuse it, you can play your next non-attacks if we're an instant. So it is, he did that. He didn't have go again. So based on that, I, you know, blocked the way I did. And then he was able to play a weave lightning, which has go again. So he played, you know, he didn't have any action points, but he played as an instant and then gained an action point off the Weave Lightning. And then he was, I mean, so that, that was, that was it. Um, and I just kind of had to sit there and like read it three times. I'm like, yep, that works. That was really nicely played. Um, nicely done, sir. So, I mean, he, he, he owned that game, um, straight up. So that was, so I, I went two and two on the night. They only did four rounds cause it was already like closing in on midnight. And with the drops we had, they didn't need it to figure out who, I think they ended up having like two players tie but since they had two kits and two mats they basically just called it right so that was completely reasonable in my opinion um okay so like i alluded to i was a little displeased with some of the mistakes that i made um but but which i sh i shouldn't i mean like the the example i had with what was inspire lightning there was one time like i non-attacked into inspire lightning and the opponent was like, uh, I don't think that works because it's not an attack. And I was like, well, yeah, it is. I, uh, oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Right. So like, I just, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Right. Like, and, uh, I don't know. Uh, but I made a couple mistakes like that all night, but there was a lot of stuff. I mean, one of the problem, one, one, and this, this is, this is a problem as I see. I mean, it's not like, it doesn't mean like LSS failed or anything. That's not what I'm saying. Don't take that out of this. But one of, one of the problems is the wall of text on these cards. There's so much text on some of these cards. And in a pre-release event, when not only is everybody learning the cards, but they're also trying to figure out the interactions, which are complex, right? Especially for the first time, you're trying to figure it out with the rulings and how it works. Like, you know, there's sometimes you're sitting there and you're reading these two cards that both have wall of text for like a minute and a half in this game, like trying to figure out how it works and like talking back and forth on how it works. And, um, so that there's just a lot of stuff going on. So I'm not making excuse from it. Like the, the inspire lightning mistake I made was like, obviously stupid. And that's why I'm disappointed that like, I made a mistake like that. I made another mistake where like, I don't even remember what it was, but I didn't made another really stupid mistake. And, um, but I think those stupid mistakes are a byproduct of having your head be elsewhere and not focusing in on the simple stuff. So that's what I'm going to try. I mean, hopefully on Sunday when I'm doing it again, I will, you know, have a little more reps under my belt and won't be quite at risk of that. But I mean, that's obvious. That's like I said, the mistakes are a me problem. I'm blaming anybody else. That's a me problem. But I was disappointed in my performance from from that standpoint. Um, but the rest, the, the rest was fine. 
So, um, yeah, so I, I talked, one of the things I talked about was I didn't feel there was a ton of blocking in at least last night's. I mean, you know, a lot of people would block like one card, but fundamentally with the fusing, like fusing is really, really, really strong. And like the, you know, the Oldham deck, that was where when I, once I fell on the back foot against Oldham and he didn't have to dump cards and he could keep ice fusing and getting, getting dominate and just, you know, two pitch cards for four or six, throw it out. He never had to swing his hammer the whole time. Right. Just anyway, the, the, because this set is so card intensive, it basically felt to me overall that whoever drew their big stuff first won. Like in, in my last game versus Billy, I mean, A, he outplayed me, like I said. But my first two my first two turns, I didn't draw a single non-attack action, right? I drew eight. My top eight cards were attack actions. And that's not how you get ahead with Briar, right? So I, you know, that's, I mean, drawing is always a thing. Randomness is always a thing. I'm not dismissing that, right? But there's very little, there is not as much tacticalness in at least limited, at least sealed, there's not as much tactical play in this set from a limited standpoint as we've seen with other sets in the past, right? It's basically pull off your combos every turn and whoever can pull off the more combos. And then I said, that's at least my, that, that is my experience from last night, but I did not see, and, and it wasn't just the games I had. It was when I was walking around looking at stuff. I didn't see a ton of blocking. And by that, I, by a ton of blocking, I mean like rarely did people block with more than one card. Um, so anyway, that, like I said, that was just my experience, my take on it. Um, so the next is arcane damage. Like, and I know there's been some chat about this, but you know, for, I don't understand. It, it, it was, you know, James White at one point had been quoted as saying that this is their best limited experience. And, you know, I was talking with Billy after our game and like Billy pointed out, he's like, well, you know, maybe the, the draft experience is way different than the sealed experience. Cause I, I think he, I, mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think he largely at least understood what I was saying is like, I don't know that the limited experience or the sealed experience, at least, I don't know the sealed experience is their best ever. Cause like, I don't know how you can have a set with arcane damage, like with a lot of, you know, I mean, Monarch had arcane damage as well. It did. And there wasn't really, there was spell void, but there really wasn't as much like no rune stuff, right? There, what there wasn't, but it didn't seem to be as big of a deal in Monarch. Um, and again, maybe that's just based on my experience, but this set there, there's a lot, there's a lot of arcane damage and there's no, there's nothing. Right. And it's, that seems, I don't know, that seems interesting, right. To be a good sealed experience or a good limit. Yeah. Simple sealed experience at least. So that's, that's out there as well. Um, so uh, a couple cards I wanted to talk about. So there, there was a lot, there was a lot of questions last night. I mean, it was a pre-release you'd expect. There was a lot of questions, but the majority, like every round I heard, I, every round I heard questions about ball lightning, judge calls on ball lightning. And then we had a huge one that came up. So the, the, the big questions for the night were, were three cards. There's ball lightning and the way it works. The next was electrify and mark of lightning and electrify, by the way, is an amazing, fantastic card in limited right? It is absolutely amazing. So let's, let's read that out. Uh, next time an attack action card hits a hero this turn, it deals X damage to them. Three, two, one electrify is played from arsenal, draw a card, go again. This card is phenomenal. Um, so the interaction that we had come up and I'll, I'll put them both on the screen in editing, uh, was mark of lightning with electrify. So whenever a lightning or elemental attack, you control is defended by a card from hand, you may destroy mark of lightning. If you do, the attack deals one damage to the defending hero, right? So the question we had with Electrify, it says, the next time an attack action card hits a hero, it deals three damage to them. Okay. So the question was, does the one from Mark of Lightning, is that considered to be a hit, right? Because we know arcane damage, arcane damage is not a hit, but doing physical damage is a hit. So we ended up ruling it last night, and I'm pretty sure this is the way it works. We ended up ruling it last night that uh, electrify did trigger on the one from arc of lightning i'm pretty sure that's the right i'm pretty sure that's right um but the point here was you know it was like we didn't know and um you know we had a lot of people who was like wasn't a lot of first time playing fab right and like so there's there's a lot of those type of interactions in in this set and the ball lightning kind of fits into that as well it's like you know what's what's arcane you know 
does it deal one arcane or two arcane? <laughs> I mean, that that's basically the way. I mean, most people understand ball lightning on the hits, but not on not on arcane. So there there was a lot of that type of stuff. Um, those were the big those were the big questions. But yeah, this mark mark of lightning. I was not fortunate enough to pull this one. This card is incredible. I did have two electrify. As electrify is awesome. So I'll definitely be looking to play that for for lightning for sure. Um, but mark of lightning is really really good especially with those other things uh, another card that i had a lot of fun with was, was bramble spark um this card's really this card's super 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 important to briar in this format because it it has the natural go, it's an action that has natural go again it gives you no matter what it gives you the arcane um and you don't even really care about the fusing. So it says next action card, you play this turn gains when you attack with this deal one arcane to target hero. And if it was fused, the next attack action card gains plus three. A lot of times it doesn't even matter if you have the fuse card or not, because you just care about basically doing this into the attack into um, Rosetta Thorn so that you can deal two and two, because they can't do anything about the arcane two. Uh, Rosetta Thorn is really, really ugly if you can manage to get the non-attack and attack, which which is not super easy, right? But, you know, in this case, um, I actually wasn't playing Earth cards after round two, um, so I was basically just playing it for the Arcane, but it, it still still did its job. So I think that's what we had to cover. So what am I going to do different? Um, the difference between round one, round one, I felt like I was, I was like, at the end of round one, I was like, I'm going to have a rough night. And... Then I kind of started going through my deck and kind of started thinking. So when I built my deck originally, I had, I think it was like 38 cards, right? Because, I mean, you guys have played, or for those of you who have played Limited before, uh, you know that you start to run out of cards, right? So I like to be a little higher if I can. So, you know, in a lot of cases, I just kind of like throw everything over the, in there. And I'm like, you know what, if I have to extra block a couple times, I can. Those were both problems, right? Because like you can't really block in this set because you need stuff. And if you do, and if you are blocking, then you're not doing what you need to do. So um, so that was a problem. And then the other one was I had a lot of earth and lightning cards, and it made it, made it very hard, right? The two worked in concert, right? Because I had earth and lightning cards in there to get to 38, it was very hard. Even when I did have, you know, a non-attack and an attack, I didn't have the right fuse. So what I did between one and two is I said, all right, fine, I'm going to go right to 30. We're going to YOLO. When right to 30, I pulled every earth card. At, well, not, I don't know every earth card, most earth cards out, whatever it was. Like, I might have had one or two. Um, because like Bramble Spark, I think you'd technically call an earth card, but like it's, it's not, right? But but you know what I mean. So I went down and we went all in on lightning and th th that did help, right? It definitely helped my consistency. So that's what I'll be doing on Sunday is I'm going to be, I mean, I'm going to go only one, Um and, and I mean, it, it was a good learning. Um, it was, thankfully, we can modify decks in between. Um, so that, like I said, that was the good learning. I, I, I don't think that I was wrong in round one with what I tried to do because I was basically working off past experience. But I think that a lot of that past experience doesn't necessarily map one to one from previous sets to Tales of Aria because like I said, blocking is not as much of a thing. It's kind of just all gas. And you need to make sure that when you're, because it's all gas, you need to make sure that you reliably get what you need to get. So I, did, I didn't see a lot of people over the night decking out. Most of the people, and I, I do have to say walking around, it looked like most of the games. I mean, when I say that most of the games were lopsided, you, you guys know the flesh and blood, that like a lot of times you'll still end at like four to zero or something like that, right? But that's because someone consciously decides to take six damage so that they can come back with eight damage or whatever it may be, right? So when I say the games are lopsided, it was basically like, is somebody in control the whole time? I mean, you know, even the game that I said I got quote unquote curb stomped on the Guardian game, I think it was still like six to zero or something like that, right? Which is which is a lot, but like you know, if you look at the final score, it doesn't look like it was that much of a disparity, but like it was. He was in control the whole time, right? So that's that's what I mean. Like walking around, it looked like most games were way more lopsided than games we've seen in the past right i mean there were i'm not saying that like every game was that way sure there were a lot of games that were good games that were close but most of the time i most of the time it looked like somebody was in control the whole time um which i think is something different than what we've seen in the past but again all of this is just my experience last night i could have a completely different experience different opinion come come sunday right so 
Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, I still had a lot, I had a lot of fun last night. Um, the, the, the one thing I do wish was not as big of a problem is the, the wall of text thing. I mean, I get it. It's how you have to do it, but it, you know, it, it's, it's one of those compounding problems of it takes people, it takes people more time to read them because we don't know them all. So you have to sit and read them. And then because there's so much going on, plus you're under the pressure of the, the clock and stuff and trying to figure it out, it, it just leads to, it, it just leads to a different experience, right? Um, when the play becomes more about the technical than the play, I think that's not always a good thing. Um, but I mean that, you know, the text has to be, you know, you even look at like Bramble Spark, like that's not that much text, but like that's still a lot of text, right? Compared to, you know, some of the WTR stuff, but you know, the game's getting more complex. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. I uh, just wanted to uh, remind everybody once again, about Gong Guy, uh, the pre-release is full for Sunday, um, so we won't see you there. But we've got um, we've got tournaments that we're running there quite regularly. So come join us, come play with us. Um, on the I haven't fixed it yet, but we do know that with our allocate with not our with Gong Guy's allocation of first edition, we're not going to be able to do that draft, um, unfortunately. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to make a different video about that, but. Once again, there's going to be, actually not once again, it's going to be the hugest gap between first edition and unlimited ever. Um, and we've already heard a lot about a lot of people getting allocated. So that's a bummer, but we'll talk about that later. So anyway, I know a lot of people are at pre-releases today, Saturday. I don't have any today because I needed to do a family day, uh, but I will be at mine tomorrow and I know people playing all weekend. So good luck with those polls first off and have a lot of fun with those pre-releases and nothing else, folks. Go Commando.